We're up. Take us Three, away. Two, one. Here we go. Oh, ho, 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 boy. It's the weekend. It's the start of the weekend, and it's SketchUp Live Day. That music is pretty loud, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. If it blew your earballs out. Uh, but no, hey, we're ready to get hyped up for the weekend. We're ready to get hyped up for SketchUp Live. See some animation tips today from Tyson. So it's going to be a wild show, a beautiful show. We're going to so- show native animation. We're going to show uh, some uh some plug-in extension animation so oh boy you're in the right place we're gonna get the party started and the sketchup tips flowing so without any further ado it's tyson karchner everybody thank you matt thanks buddy always always good to uh spend a friday with uh with matt good times it's never a dull, never a dull moment. <laughs> Gotta uh, bring it, yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks everybody. Uh, let us know. Let us know where you're coming in from. Some of you uh, will uh, hopefully be joining us. So you've been with us before, so chime out. We'd love to, to hear from you. But uh, definitely, if you're new or infrequent, put it in the chat. Let us know where you're coming in from. We'll give you a shout out. We love to see new faces and old faces. And old, old faces for those of you. <laughs> <laughs> Crusty old, yeah, curmudgeon faces. <laughs> since, since last week, we got caught on a whole age thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're a spring check and you're ready to, uh, to bring it, bring the youth to the show. Oh, but, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, a couple of folks in the chat here. Randy joined for the first time live. Thank you for uh, watching. If GRE is that a Mexican flag? Hey, good to see you. Toa, hello from Poland. Marsan, Marsin. Uh, I don't know exactly how to say it. Hello. Welcome, um, welcome. Ooh, Brian says uh, this channel should be turned into a real TV channel because the content's so much more interesting than any other show on TV. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Thank you. Wow, I think the Great British Bake Off is still better, but maybe just a bit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Paul Hollywood, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to channel. I don't have those blue eyes. <laughs> and, of course, no ads on the SketchUp channel. Well, aside mm. from uh, SketchUp stuff. Oh, that, <laughs> but yeah. that's what we're here for. That's right. We're gonna, <laughs> we are still going to pump 3D Base Camp, so you better be ready for that. Uh, <laughs> we, we push that so much, it's like those SeatGeek YouTube. Like, you, you can't get rid of them. There. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, hopefully you've memorized it by now, but uh, it's gonna be fun. But um, let's see, we got Georgia, Romania, Sierra Leone, Austin, Texas, New York, Italy, Belgium. Hello, and welcome to the global SketchUp TV show, SketchUp Live. Um, and what are we uh, what are we doing today? What are we showing? You got some? I can see some animation on that screen. Yeah, so. Um, what I what I'd like to do today, yes, animation's the topic. Um, as Matt mentioned, we're going to do a lot in native tools, and then we're going to jump into one extension. Now, the the biggest animation extension out there, I think, is without question Fredo's Animator. And I apologize if you're here for that because we're not gonna we're not gonna dig into that this week. I think that one deserves an entire session all to itself. And quite frankly, I'm not good enough on it to demo it. Uh, but I would like to, or maybe Aaron would like to, We, I, I think we should do it. What we are going to do is focus on what you can do with the native tools inside SketchUp and the animation tool called Keyframe Animator. So we're going to have some fun. We're going we're to kind of see how far we can push some of these things and, uh, and what might happen. But I would like this to be partial demo and a lot of Q&A. So if you have questions, please have questions. Throw them in the chat. Matt will pass them along. And, and I'd like to uh, you know, ask questions. Uh, I, I'd like to hopefully we can answer some questions. I mean. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely some questions that come up uh, with scene animations, I feel like. Uh, there's some stuff that's maybe not intuitive or people can get hung up on so uh 
yeah, I'm sure we'll see some questions, but yes, I will do my job of reading out the chat. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, <laughs> and you always so step up to the plate, Matt. I mean, you never <laughs> let us down. <laughs> I will read through each and every one <clears throat> Okay, so let's jump in. I want to show, and some of this will be very basic if you've done some of these, and then we're going to try to sort of push push further. But let's cover the basics uh, it really quickly, and if there's some of you out there who have never done any scene animations, then ask questions or shout it out, and we can cover anything there. But just to be sure. So let me delete these scenes I've got here. Trash them. Poof. Poof. Here's our simple little view. I'm going to change my field of view because I like uh, something a little wider. Um, animation in SketchUp, you cannot animate objects. You can just animate a few settings like the camera view and uh, turning things on and off. You can make it seem like you're animating objects if you turn objects on and off in a sequence. But mostly in here, we're just going to animate a few parameters or the camera. And we'll get into sort of some selective uh, picking of scenes, but let's just show the very basics. So I've got this view here. I'm going to add a scene, and I've got everything selected. I'll tilt my camera, something up here, add a scene, and then back down here and add a scene. Now as I click on these scenes, it's basically transitioning between those views. Uh, there is a button, if I hit this play button, it's going to just transition between the scenes and it will continue play uh, until you pause. Now that uh, is something that you may need to go into your menu to find, you can also uh, right click on a scene and say play animation. So that's that's a really basic intro. Um, now, <clears throat> scenes are so pivotal, so if you're not very familiar with scenes, you should be uh, spend some time, get familiar, familiar with using scenes, adding scenes, manipulating scenes. Let's say on these, so I've got my camera views, if I click between these, and uh, let's go down here to scene three, and I'm going to add another scene. This time we're going to just animate the shadows, um, but I only want to animate the shadows, so I'm going to turn off. Now I got to be careful. This is one of the things about understanding scenes. I have scene three selected here, scene one, a tab selected here. It, it, it admittedly, it can be confusing understanding which scene is active or being treated as active. And right here, because I have this one selected, I think if I turn these off, you know, because I, I want to turn a lot of these settings off and not record them, I think I'm going to change scene three. So I, I could potentially mess stuff up. So I'm going to add a scene first. I've got scene four now, just to be sure, with scene four selected, I'm going to turn those off. And I can double check that just to say, now if I click on scene four, nothing happens. There's no camera location saved. But I do want to save. Let's. Uh, in our shadows here, then I want to say active, or let's see, shadow settings. So I'm going to turn that on while scene four is selected. And now that shadow settings is selected, if I add a new scene, it should also be selected in scene five. Now I didn't change the shadows, so let's move the shadows. And then under scene five, I'm going to update this, and I'm just going to update the shadow settings. So between scene four and scene five, I now have a shadow transition. And I should be able to look at that from any view because we did not save camera information. Now, if I come mm -hmm. back to scene two, that has camera and shadow and a lot of other information saved to it. I could change that, but just 
that's the first kind of real understanding is make sure you, like I say, work, uh, understand scenes, understand what you're recording, understand the, the ability to change them after the fact. The better you can plan ahead and record it correctly the first time, the, the easier your life will be. You can change it after the fact, but generally uh, try to know what you're going to achieve. What do we say, Matt? I had a question about editing scenes and mm -hmm. uh, like at the very beginning of your example, you had the little pencil icon was in front of one of the scenes, but then the like highlight was on a different one. Mm -hmm. And so is the highlighted thing what's changing it or is it the little <laughs> pencil or because uh, I think the a... pencil was what the top bar was selected, right? That's a and great question. Afterwards... Okay. Um, like this, yeah. Right, like this. So, let's find out together, right? I have my suspicion, but let's be sure. Scene three is selected here. Scene three, I think scene three, I think you're correct. Uh, if we make changes here, um, change the, uh, like add the camera location to, this is scene five. Let's find out if mm -hmm. scene, yeah. Um, we have, so it, it, it's unfortunate to, to say that's, that's uh, we already admitted it was confusing. This is more confusing because scene three did have the pencil. You'd think, wait, that would indicate that that's the one you're editing. But if you choose a different scene in the scene manager, that's the one. And, and, and you can kind of see this by how the parameters change. That's the one you're going to be changing the parameters of. Um, so you should only change, like when you're when you're doing animations and updating scenes, you suggest doing it only from this panel, not from the little top bar. Definitely. Um, okay. That's going to come back. When we get to the, the um, animator, the keyframe animator plugin, mm-hmm. You don't want to just mess with this. You actually want to activate scenes and make sure a scene tab is activated. But just we're de still dealing with native. Yes. And, and part of the reason for this is you can't have multiple scenes active, you know, here. But here, if I wanted to update all of these scene one through scene five, I can update all of these and just have this camera location saved and update. That's part of the reason how you could think of like why that works that way. So see th this pencil just kind of indicates which scene tab is is currently highlighted, but it that's it and that's so let us know mm -hmm. if that, you know, answers the question or not, but now every camera view should be from here which means scene one, two, and three should be identical. There's nothing. And scene four and five should still have the shadow information, but now we've recorded the camera, which means we could go back to scene four and five and remove the camera information from those if we wanted to sort of restore them the way they were without mm -hmm. any camera. Oh, and we had one quick question <coughs> about uh, Sometimes when you first open up the scenes panel, this little bottom part doesn't show up. It's just like the scene oh. names. And so people might not know about the, yeah. Thank you, thank you, excellent question. The scenes, there's there's a couple like this. Let me show the shadows as well. Um, and I'm on Mac, of course. This may be a little bit different on PC, but I think this part is similar. Expand the scenes with this little toggle here so that you can get access to this. Shadows is the same. There's some extra settings down here. There, I'm trying to remember, Styles has another window. There's a few of these that have expanded options. So that's a great question. Expand these options mm -hmm. um, to work with that. Um, while we're on that, so let me show a quick way to say, okay, Let's reestablish some camera. So I'm on scene one and I want to refresh just scene one. 
just the camera information. So I'm going to remove all those, update it, and then over here I'll make this scene two. So I'm going to select it, this and refresh just the camera. Update. Okay. And the reason to bring that up is to, if we go to View Animation Settings, this is also this is just a way to go to Window Model Info. It's this. You're, it's going to pull up the same dialog. <coughs> Excuse me. This is our model info, and we just automatically go to the Animation tab. Many of you will know that we recommend creating scenes as working options. So I could turn off transitions, and then I can just jump to different parts of the model or turn different parts of the model on and off. It's really helpful. But here's also where you say, I need a really nice, slow transition. So I'm going to turn that up to six seconds. And now if I go back to scene one, that doesn't seem like six to me. Let me make sure you that's click out. You have to click out of the box, I think. To... Let's make sure we've done that. There we go. Yeah, so hint it, hit enter, or as Matt says, click out. Make sure it's accepted that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Scene delay. Again, we talked about if you right click and just play the animation. Scene delay is how long it will pause between scenes. So turn it to zero if you want no scene delay, or turn it up if you want to pause between scenes. Um, I'll catch up on some some folks here. Uh, we have Yonkers, New York, Turkey, Germany, Vancouver, Washington, um, uh, Vancouver, BC, England. Uh, boo 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 boo. Um, What's that? And <laughs> yeah, boo boo is not a place. Oh, India? Did I say India? Um, wow. I was just jumping through trying to find other place names but of course we have one other thing that i want to mention which is uh brian says they sh we should have an animation contest using just tips from this episode and then winner gets a free ticket to the base camp oh wouldn't that be awesome <laughs> if i yeah. had the clout to give out free tickets i would give all everybody in the chat i would give you a free pass to base camp no kidding but we do have something <clears throat> we can give you real quick before we move on in the tips here Today, there's a promo for 3D Basecamp Hot Dog. If you don't know what 3D Basecamp is, it's the summit of all the best SketchUppers and uh, all the best people from the community. We're all going to be there from the team. So um, it's the SketchUp User Conference. It's in Vancouver, British Columbia, this September, 26th to 30th. Uh, it's going to be a whole bunch of fun. If uh, you've ever talked to anybody who's been to Basecamp before, they're the best SketchUp place to be. So um, a lot of learning, a lot of community, a lot of fun, um, and, you know, advance your career, you know, all this kind of stuff. Great SketchUp tips. But, folks, today, the environment, it's Earth Day. It's Earth Day, and we love the Earth, and that means that we have a promo code for 3D Basecamp. If you go to, I'll put the link in the chat in one sec, 3D Basecamp and buy tickets, and you put in the promo code Earth Day 2022 it's 10% off any ticket to base camp. Boom! Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so show your support for the Earth and also for your desire to learn more SketchUp tips um, at 3D Base Camp. So Earth Day 2022, I will drop all the links and give you the promo code in the chat in a sec. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> great, great <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, Base camp is so awesome. I hope I hope many of you will be able to attend. It is incredible. Um, so while Matt was sharing that info, I deleted the existing scenes we had. That part um, again. Any questions on that? Happy to show more. I wanted to show how you can animate sections and a few thoughts around animating sections. Um, now, you may intuitively think, which I think makes a lot of sense, that to animate a section, you would animate one section. You would say, okay, this section starts here, and maybe on scene two, 
it ends here. Yeah, but in, makes sense. Yeah, I know. But, but <laughs> oh, ah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh, hold it, hold it. <laughs> in fact, to make things fun, or I don't know, just because it's how we were able to make it work, you don't animate one section; you transition between two sections. So, if I want to animate a section and animate this sort of like appearing. I need to create two sections. So I'm going to have this one, and I could create another section over here uh, in any orientation, or I could just take this one and as copy it as well. So if we look, we've got that section right now is active, which is why our, our little gates disappeared. If I double click here, this one's active, and both of them are pointing that way. So again, if I activate that one, it's treating it as that section is um, cutting away everything behind it. So you can make a section active cut just by double clicking on it. That's correct. Yes. I did not know that. Ding. Yeah. Learning something Ooh. new. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> That's just me, but okay, cool. Nice. So that, yeah. Um, let's create two scenes. And I want to get rid of uh, include animation. Yes, we want these. We'll talk about that in a moment. But um, I'm just going to get rid of all the settings and create a couple blank scenes to use. Scene one, scene two. Now, I want this to effectively you know, uh, appear from nothing. I could disappear it, which obviously we'll, we'll be able to do once we set this up. but. So for scene one, I want this section to be active. So I'm going to click on scene one here and active section planes. I'm going to turn that on. So now scene one should have that recorded. Scene two, double click as we just learned to activate that one and then click on scene two and I'm going to active section planes. Okay. Cross your fingers. So <laughs> this, <laughs> this doesn't always work the first time, but hey, it worked the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to go to the little uh, refresh icon and pop up the little thing and click on section planes. Just by clicking active section plane, once you click that box, it remembers that setting, right? As long as you have a scene or multiple scenes selected, you can manipulate them directly right here. Cool. Um, if I wanted to, yeah. So think of it as two ways to do it. There's, there's, I'm, yes, the short answer is yes. I'm trying to think. There's probably reasons when you'd use one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, I did not save the style, which is helpful because a lot of times you'll create this sort of animation effect. And then you're like, that's cool. I want my section outlines to be uh, not showing. And that's part mm -hmm. of your style. And so I can actually just toggle those off with uh, one of these icons. And now, there we go. And of course, Ooh. like we saw, uh, our, our speed settings are here. So if we wanted to slow that down a bit, then we should be able to do that. So, ooh. Ooh. and where yeah. where is the um, in the menus the section showing section planes or whatever? How can I change that if I don't have the the thing in the toolbar? So Bye. a couple. Of, I don't remember that they're in the tool palettes. They might be on a Mac. And I'm sorry because I know most people out there. I know most of you are on PC. I'm sorry. On a Mac, you go to customize toolbar. You right click. And um, these happen to be Whoa. right here. This is a whole ton because I've got a bunch of extensions. <laughs> but they're view you section planes, view section cuts, view section fill. If you're on um, PC, please correct me or shout it in the chat. But you should be able to view toolbars. And then there's some section tools. Mm -hmm. um, you probably search too, right? That's right, we've got this here lovely search. So if I 
I can view section cuts or view section fill. Nope, just kidding. Uh, planes? View section planes, you're right. <laughs> I, uh, I always forget about the search, and I'm like looking through the menus, and I'm like, gosh dang it, if I just remember to search for this, it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> so let's, let's push this a little farther with sections, because the, if you've used sections, then you understand the idea of context. What I mean is this. You can only have one section active in its context. So if I put a section plane uh, here, I will lock that and drop it right into there. I've just dropped it into the whole model. It's gonna be a section plane for whatever is in the model. If I draw a new box, that's gonna cut through it. I've got half a box over here not showing and then if I double click to activate this one, move it, right. So it's just cutting anything in the model right now. Let's back up a little bit. But you can change that by embedding a section inside an object, object being a group or component, either one. So this roof, for example, is a group and inside are a series of components, but I'll just drop it inside this group and and it should just put, put, put that section just inside the context of that group. Nice. And at this point, if, this, if you haven't animated sections much before, maybe your brain's exploding and you're like, wait, can I reanimate multiple sections by putting them in their own context? Oh, yes, you can. Wow! So fun! Okay, so... <laughs> so get, let's do it! <laughs> I'm psyched. Can't um, wait. Now, I, <laughs> this, this gets into that, that little bit we mentioned earlier where, like, plan ahead and, and know what you're doing. If I start throwing a bunch of sections and not knowing which scenes they are, I'm, I'm going to confuse myself, at least. There's probably smarter people, everybody out there is smarter, but for myself, I'm going to start over again with a different plan. So, scene one, scene two, goodbye, sections. Bye bye. Go goodbye. Get rid of you. Bye bye. I got to be careful if I delete this section, I'm deleting the roof because it's embedded in there. So, I'm going to go inside the roof, delete it. Let's just kind of reset. So let's create. Um, let's create. Let's let's see, let's let's have some fun. Uh, we could create multiple scenes and animate different pieces on each one at a time. Um, I think we'll try to do just one scene, but like three different section animations happening. Let's try that. Ooh. So uh, I want to start with a blank section again. That's my preference. One, two, okay. And then I want to set up this column is a component. It should be, it's part of two of these. So let's set up a section here. And so you can see that being a component if we affect one of these, it's going to affect the other one. So let's just move this down a little bit and say on scene one, we want that section plane active. And then on scene two, remember we can't animate uh, the one, we need to create a second one. So I can Sections like everything else, you can use the arrow keys or shift to uh, lock it. But see, so I've created a second one. Let's activate it and then move it up high enough that it'll reveal the post. Scene two, toggle that on. All right, let's test it. 
What do we got? Oh, you know what? I think I've got a long animation set, and let me let me turn that down while we're testing. Sounds good. Uh, we had a question, Scapa. This is easier to do with one section plane. Why are you using two? Uh, because this is a, a animation, and in order to animate a section cut or a section plane, you have to have two, uh, and then make one active on the starting. Uh, scene and then make the next one active on the, the ending scene in order to animate that section. Yeah. Good question. That That's just the nature of how this works in SketchUp. And I don't have this set up quite right, so let's just go in this one. Let's make sure it's active. And then on scene two, I'm going to toggle this off and toggle it on to kind of refresh that. And then I'm going to activate this one, choose scene one, and refresh this by toggling it off and on just to be sure. Now, got it. Got him. Okay, got so him. we've got one set up. Let's set up uh, the roof. And we can, all of these are different pieces that we could do, but let's group this just as a way to say, let's get this whole piece animated. So, and, and the sequence of this, if we want to update the scenes as we go or update them later, um, there, there is a piece of this I think that we're gonna have to be a little bit careful of. So, for example, now, if I come in here and look, we're going to add, um, let's see, which direction? We'll animate one going that way, and we'll animate the other one going a different way. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to make a copy of it down here. I have to be careful because if I do this the way that we just did, where I say, OK, I want this to animate on, which means on scene one, I want this one to be active. Uh, oh, I guess not in this cause. I want this one to be active. Oh, did I? Did I put these in here? Yeah, okay, shoo, they just set up. If I update, Right now, scene one, I could lose the work I did for the post. So from here out, instead of just selecting scene one, I'm going to double click on scene one, which will also activate it in the tab. So I want to make sure that whatever setting I already had is also preserved since I want to add to it, not override it. I hope that makes sense. So for scene one, if I double click, now, now our posts are gone, that is active, and if I double click here, I should, everything set up correctly, be able at this point to say, okay, update this, which turn this on, turn this off, and then if I double click on scene two or click scene two here, Um, it already had this one active. I want to be sure, just in case, so I'm going to double click on this one. Okay. So if we toggle those off, we should. All right. right. We're halfway there or two thirds away there. And then if the, the last one is let's do this one. So uh, again, I'm going to group these so that I can put it, or I could do. These are components. If I did just one component, it would effectively, um, you know, do this. So again, you can get really fancy. You can have one scene where your horizontal elements come on, and then the next one, your vertical elements build up, and then the next one, you know, more comes in. But um, I'm going to do just all of these together. So. I'm going to group those and let's see if we can set this up from the start. Uh, in this case, I think it's also important to say that 
you're when you're doing these section animate changing the scenes and stuff the only thing that's active in your um in your checkboxes there and the properties to save is that section plane because when you want to turn off the section uh like the you see here the little blue thing with the arrows that's tied to a style which is also can be associated with the scene so if you do ha save everything then that information would be saved with the scene so you might get some weird unexpected stuff going on um so only update the property that you want to see change across the the uh, animation yeah yep uh, thank you matt for that reminder because again it goes all the way back to you you really scenes are so helpful but you got to wrap your head around them and that just takes some some time we did a we did a whole live section a live one of these uh months ago on scenes and we've got scene we've got scale builders on scenes lots of resources um now so let's see now this is curious matt because of basically that's disproving what we said i only have one section plane oh it's not embedded in this group it, but still, it's kind of weird. I have this one section plane, and it's moving. I'm not sure what's happening. I will own that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I do know. I do know that uh, this section plane is not inside this group, which is where I wanted it to be. So... Um, there could be, I, I also know that I want this to work predictably and the way I know it to work predictably is two sections. So if some point there was a, a function that, what, that changed that and I didn't know about it, I don't know, but I, I know that at this point I wanna make sure I do this the way that I expect it to work. <laughs> Yeah, there's certainly some stuff that can go wrong. Yeah. yeah. So uh, mm. I've got scene one active in both my tab and my over here, which is the important one. Everything is out, so active section planes. I'm gonna refresh that. I didn't add the second one. We'll see if that if uh, that gets me into trouble. I'm gonna copy it, and then I'll. But I haven't refreshed scene one, so it should be that I go to scene two, double click on scene two, and then I'm gonna double click to activate. Make sure this is active. In fact, I better, yeah, it's active. Those are active. Refresh, okay. It should be that we've got it all set up. And it is, so as Matt mentioned, these section planes are tied to the style, so be careful, like you said. If your style is saved in here, you'll need to update your style. But in this case, uh, I did not save the style. So between scene one and scene two, I can do this multi-section animation. Sweet. Sweet. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Yay. That's All cool. right. Uh, any questions on that? Shout them out because we're going to move past that option. But um, section messing with sections, you can like I say those are the basic ideas. As long as you stick to those ideas, keep adding scenes, keep animating within context, and you can do some really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, let me see. We had some sort of comments, not necessarily a specific like actionable question, but. Brad was suggesting it'd be cool if there was a check all or uncheck all in the properties of the scene panel. Um, oh, right. <laughs> that'd be nice so you don't have to go through. So you're not click, all click, 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 click. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Randy says, yes, it looks like you have to plan some ahead of time rather than just make it up. Um, you can try to make it up. It just usually doesn't do what you want it to do. <laughs> It'll probably do something. <laughs> 
Um, we had a couple people saying that on Windows you can either right click on the toolbar and select section or uh, view drop down to toolbars and then section. Section tools, section? I'm not exactly sure what it's what it's called, but um, let's see. We have Keggy in the chat. Hey, nice to see you. Um, Paul, Lenny says, happy Earth Day. Hello. I know these are old comments. I'm just catching up here. Oh, that's um, happy Earth Day, everybody. I love living on the Earth. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice place to be. It is. Great place to live. Here, it's very nice this time of year. Um, and looks like we have uh, the SketchUp Essentials. Justin Geis in the uh, chat there. But, uh, High five emoji. So. <clears throat> Justin, welcome. I'm sure uh, you could learn us some real advanced stuff. So if, if anybody does want to learn about uh, Fredo's, Justin's got several videos on him. That's where I'll be going to learn. So thank you, Justin, for the work you do. Appreciate it. Um, let's see. I have a comment here. You can do it the same way. Section plane hide object at the end doing active from scene one and the second scene doing that section plane inactive. Same result. I don't <laughs> entirely understand, but the, they say it, it's easier. Um, I don't know if this means moving the section plane and then updating the scene or... Because I thought you had to do two section planes, too, and make one active and one not. Um, I did as well, and... Um, I I don't want to... If, if that is and works great for you, I am thrilled. I'm not sure I understand. Um, or, and, and this isn't what you were saying. You were saying active and non-active. So if I took this, made it, um, uh, let's see, scene three, I'm going to make that active. And then on scene four, I'm going to uh, turn this section off. Uh, I forget. I always forget which of these it is. And then so scene four, I'm going to refresh that. So I think this is what you're describing, that by active and non-active. So I, I don't want to get caught up in it. Thank you um, that if there's a good way to do this that we didn't show. Thanks for calling that out. I, I'm sorry I can. I'm not doing a good job of duplicating it. No, you're good. Um, um, we also had one comment um, about uh, what Brad calls the section delay trick, moving the starting section away from the model some distance, and then that appears to delay the roof section until after the poles are fully revealed, meaning that your, as your section animates, it's just a linear relationship from starting point to ending point, from scene to scene. So if you want to make something start later, you can't really like say, okay, make this one start a little bit later. So um, you just move it further away so that, you know, the first 80% of the sections moving, it's not actually hiding any geometry. But then, um, yeah, so long way to say, thank you, Brad. And we also have a bunch of uh, trolls in the chat here. As long as it's not mean-spirited, then you're all set. But um, inappropriate, we're gonna, can't, we're gonna delete the comments there. So heads up, appreciate the trolls. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, to your point, uh, to the point that was brought up, thank you, excellent point. Like, I just moved this one out, which means that this is, the roof is gonna appear a lot faster um, because now it's still traveling. And the same in reverse, like if you wanted it to appear later, then yeah, you would extend that. So that's a good tip, the delay tip or, or faster based on where you put the section planes. That's a good one. And a reminder that, um, so one of the reasons why it is nice that you can transition between two is not, is because not everything you do would be linear. 
Uh, right? So if we let's just put a section in here like this, and that's going to be scene three. And then we'll make a copy of that section and rotate it. Oops. So now we're getting tricky. <laughs> Um, uh, also, real quick, Randy did have a question about the difference between refreshing by clicking the little box and by going to the refresh button, and um, it's basically the same thing, right? Gives it you is. the same control. Uh, yeah. It is. Um, so in this one, uh, just to show again, let's say, uh, toggle these off. Um, <clears throat> right, so now we get a different type of transition. And then if we didn't like that and wanted it to cut, let's say, halfway through because we wanted to emphasize the fence, so let's turn our, let's go back to scene four here and make an adjustment to it. And then we'll update it. It looked like it had been sliced by a katana for a second. <laughs> Uh, so if we wanted to update this, rather than I'm just toggling this on and off because I, then I don't need to hit the refresh, but if I hit the update, um, I don't have to toggle this on and off. I just want to update, and so you're right. Like it, it's two ways to do kind of a similar thing, but that should be updated now. Um, Tweet. Sweet. This one's way out here because we've got a section plane way out here, I think. Anywho, that is that. Um, I think uh, let's let's carry on. Full speed ahead. <laughs> okay, so the the next example that I thought to show and just to give a teaser I wanted to I, I wanted to show one more way to to play with native tools and then in a moment we'll come uh, to our Star Wars trench here and we're going to animate some uh, TIE fighters and X-wings so Whoa. that's <laughs> that'll be what we do for um, keyframe animator when we get to moving objects around um, so that's a teaser. If you want to take 10 or 15 minutes and, and grab a drink, I want to show one more thing with the native tools, though. Um, yeah, stick around. We actually did have a question about uh, Star Wars Trench Run earlier. Somebody oh. right in your mind. <laughs> yes. Uh, I can't find it, but um, yeah, it was like suggestion for a live model. Oh, here you go. Live demo request, repeating Death Star Trench Chase. It has modeling, object duplication, and or duplica duplication. Anyways, and animation plus Tie Fighters. Hey, you got we got it all, baby. That is a hundo p true, and that's a hundo p <laughs> how this was created. So, whoever you are, you got a ticket to base. I, I'm sorry, I can't do that, but I wish I could. <laughs> oh man, that's <laughs> absolutely true. <laughs> so yeah, that's what that's what we're gonna do. It'll be fun. Let's see. Um, this one is a little, this is a quirky example. As um, we, we, there's not like every, we can animate sections. Animating styles kind of works, but I don't recommend it um, because the transitions, anyway, no. Um, mm -hmm. Access location is great to save to scenes for usability reasons. I don't know why you would ever animate that. So animating section planes, animating shadows, animating tags is really useful, or at least toggling them on or off uh, through scenes. And it's it's more functionally useful, but let's let's create a silly little example where we could use it in animation. <clears throat> so I'm just going to create a big old 
square like this. I'll make it a component, doesn't matter. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's move this up, let's say, two feet, six times. That creates a seven. Um, and I, depending on how far you want to take this, maybe you create 12 or 15 or more. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, where am I? I need to go to my tags. And I want to create a tag for each one of these. Let's, let's go back to six. Let's just make six of these. So, two. So six tags, not necessarily named correctly, but. And then in entity info, I'm going to assign each one to sort of the layer tag. So tag five. And if I turn these off, I'll know they're assigned when they disappear. This one is tag four. This one is tag three. This one, and so forth. Two, one. Um, also, I want to address a question in the chat real quick. Um, can you change the zoom level uh, across scenes? Yes. I think that's camera position, right, is what that would be associated with but it's not really ideal i it, it moves the camera too when you change your zoom so it's not like yeah it's not going to work really like you want it to in other uh softwares so if you're using 3dx max or another this is the person brings 3ds max up or another thing uh another software to do animation any like camera based stuff Basically, just zoom. Um, you'd probably want to do that outside of SketchUp. You can you can do it, but it's not it's not ideal. Um, just to illustrate, uh, so if you wanted to create, let's let's say you want to create kind of a, a Hitchcock effect, where you're zooming in but widening the camera at the same time. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Matt. Like, if you're doing complicated camera moves and you have other software, that's ideally where you want to do it. I do think we can create a little bit of an effect like that. So if I go to scene five, I zoom in, but I make my field of view. Actually, let me start from zooming out. So I'm here at scene five, and I'm gonna change my field of view to 40, let's say, and then update the camera. You, tell me, Matt, I, I haven't tried this. We might run, this may fail horribly, so just with that caveat. <laughs> okay, and now let's go to scene six. I'm going to zoom in, but I'm going to change my field of view to 70 so that we still see a lot of this, and I'm going mm -hmm. to update the camera position. Now, so we do get not a perfect, but a semi sort of weird focal shift, uh, mm -hmm. a lens shift. Yeah, and this, like, I feel like the camera position, like, it interpolates from the beginning to the end position. So if, if you have a big move, you can tell that, like, the ax, the, you know, the Z axis or whatever, the t uh, roll will yeah. go weird. And, like, yeah, it kind of, like, interpolates the position of the camera along with the zoom. So that's why it's not ideal, but if you want to do some funky, cool looking stuff like that, yeah, you certainly can. Fun to play around with, but I, I, I think we'll get a little bit into how the camera interpolation in SketchUp is only semi-predictable. Like, mm -hmm. you have to be a little bit wary that you don't have fine control over camera transitions, which we'll get into uh, mm -hmm. with the next example. But I don't know. Yes. That's kind of that was fun. Um, Good suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question. Uh, Jeff also asked if we can record a walkthrough, and I think there's probably a skill builder or something on scene transition animations. I can look it up and see if we have a a video. I know we have some video somewhere, but uh, I'll try to drop it in the, in the chat here. Um, uh, absolutely, and. and 
Um, one of the tools for walkthroughs is this position camera tool. So if I don't know if I still have a person in here, but uh, oh gosh, I'm completely misunderstanding what he means by walkthrough. Okay, yeah, you got it. I'm glad you're here. You can pick up the, the slack. Uh, are we sure? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking he was talking about like a software walkthrough, not a walkthrough of the model. Oh, well, <clears throat> so yeah, a walkthrough, this, uh, I just created this uh, line to give me sort of an eye height, and uh, I'm just going to duplicate it a couple times, maybe as points of interest to look to. This tool, um, the eyeball tool, look around. Uh, no, no, sorry. Position camera, this little person. Click and drag, and it will, wherever you click, it's going to put your eye, and wherever you drag to, it's going to put where you're looking to. So if I click here to here, and then it puts me in the look around tool where I can reestablish. But I may say, let's see if we can add a scene here. I've got camera location checked, and then you know, you don't have to use that tool. You can just navigate and say, and now I want, or actually I'm going to walk past this thing and then I add a scene and then I need to turn around and add a scene. Um, you know, and then you can export this whole sequence out. That's what this include in animation. If I go through scenes seven through nine and I turn off, they're still going to transition. You might think that that turns off the transition, but it doesn't. What it does is when you go up here to file export animation, those scenes won't be included in your export. So if you have scenes that are just, you know, like say functional ones or ones where you toggle your shadows on or off or something else, you can toggle include animation off. But if I want that walkthrough, I want to make sure that that is included. So um, again, it's not what you see on screen. It's just include animation is, is for anything that you want to export. Uh, but yeah, uh, like you say, Matt, I'm sure we have a couple of skill builders on sort of creating a walkthrough. That yes. is a good question. Um, yeah. Back here, where were we? Was there another one? Oh, no, I was just saying thanks to Jeff for the question. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we did have one more explanation about the... Uh, trying to explain the section... Uh, active section cut thing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll just read it out word for word. Um, scene one, empty space. Activate section planes to hide all geometry. Scene two, deactivate section planes. Same result with one section plane. Okay. I'm curious, again, um, so if that works as a linear transition, um, I, th I do think it's still useful to know the other one because I don't know how you would use that in both in like multiple transitions or in, again, rotating transitions. Um, so if that works for all of most of what you do, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, also, Randy had a question about the position camera tool. And when you showed it, you said when you first click, that's where your eye goes. And then where you drag to is where you look. And then what shows up in the in the um, measurements box is eye height, right? Correct. He says his his, his eye always shows up on the ground. And uh, so, which may happen yeah. if you click anywhere on. <clears throat> this is a good this is a good thing. So, um, position camera. If I just click right here on the ground, one click, it's going to put me at a default eye height above the ground plane of five foot six. Now I'm going to do that again and this time I'm going to click, just click, on the roof. 
puts me five foot six on the roof. It's gonna put you five foot six inches above whatever you click on, single click. And so my eye height now shows at 12 feet and change because we're on the roof. If instead I'd use the drag function, so not a single click, but I click here and drag to look at the corner of this, it's gonna show me that that, it just so happens that I made that stick four feet, 10 inches high, and that's now my eye height. Um, so it depends on whether you click, if you're clicking on just that invisible ground plane, if you're clicking on something else, or if you're clicking and dragging, you should be seeing kind of just different options that happen. Mm -hmm. So if you click and drag off the ground, you could type in six foot or whatever, and then it would change to, to be uh, six foot. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, sorry, yes, if I... He also does say, thanks for the tip of putting it on the end of a vertical line. He said he didn't think of that before, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's always helpful to be able to put it exactly where you want. And yeah, if I mm -hmm. type... Right now, eye height is active, so yeah, if I type eight feet and hit enter, it should raise me exactly eight Ooh, feet above super that super tall where's the basketball mm -hmm. hoop i'm gonna go dunk boom don't even have to lower it baby <laughs> <laughs> um also we have a gentleman named steve guzman in the chat he says can you do a class on how cool how to be as cool as tyson i would pay for it dollar dollar bills <laughs> my friend goose you, you need no help from me, buddy. You got the cool dialed in. Um, cool cat, the coolest cat in town. <laughs> Goose, is, Goose is a cool cat. Everybody can thank Goose. He, he works on the uh, 3D warehouse. Helps keep that up and running, which is awesome. And also helped launch recently, if you've seen in the 3D warehouse, most if not all models now have a little VR and you can take the SketchUp viewer on your phone or iPad and bring a model in from the warehouse and then just drop it into a VR environment so I can be like, I wanna see what this looks like in my living room. I can drop a model in here. It's So, Goose, we wanna be as cool as you. It's, it's, it's some exciting stuff. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Goose. And yeah, check out the uh, the AR viewing on 3D Warehouse if you haven't already. It's awesome. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, Lawrence was questioning your pronunciation of height and said maybe you said height. <laughs> I didn't. I might have. Um. <laughs> it's annoying because it's depth, width. And height. Height. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Come on, I, you got a pattern going. Um, where's my? The, I, I apologize. This one's going to get a little heavy on just like all these menus, but um, I'm going to put this on what tag five. Uh, this is just a quick example to show how you can create the idea of movement and animation just by um, tags. So we're going to create a simple water droplet sprite. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. If you're good at drawing, you could have a lot of fun with something like this. I'm not going to pretend like that's going to work that well. Um, but I put this on tag 5. That way I can turn tag 5 off. I can also turn tag 4 on. And if I invoke um, x-ray mode, I have this underneath as sort of a, if you're familiar with hand animation, I, I think it's called onion skinning, where you see sort of what you've been drawing. So now I'm on tag four, but this new um, sheet, if you will, is active. So I'll be drawing on that one when I draw. So let's say this water droplet is elongating and starting to create a little we'll make this our uh, so that yeah, I'm going to group that and put it on 
four. Activate tag three. Draw again. So now we've got the beginning of our water splash. I don't think that closed, but we're gonna, we're gonna group it and keep moving forward. Tag two. How many tag? That one group tag two and then let's make it go away so freehand freehand all right it's starting to subside and interesting slow. that the uh the time you use freehand on stream you're not using your uh your uh -huh. tablet there oh you're so <laughs> right <laughs> I need it, right? Like, uh, what a time to not have. Just try to push through with mouse. You're doing um, a good job. For some of the other things, I wanted to stay on mouse today, but you're, this would be perfect for the for the uh, for this purpose. You're right. That's funny. <laughs> Honestly, on SketchUp for iPad, the uh... The new and improved freehand tool with the Apple Pencil is like, oh my god, this is pretty sweet. Seems like it would be perfect for doing something like this. Yeah. Okay. I um, group tag. All right. So it should be that we've got these. Uh oh, this one untagged. Which one is that one? That looks like, I think, number one here. Yep. So let's put that on number one. So now what we need to do is create, um, we already created these scenes. I don't think they've got anything associated with them, which is good. Um, I am going to turn these all on. Select our little, I can make cut. Um, Select them, copy them over here, and uh, if I turn this on, then we, anyway, it'd be nice if those closed, but we'll get the idea. Let's uh, let's create our scenes. Oh, well, mm. that, that, you know, that's part of the, the risk of the way I did it, is it referenced geometry beneath it. I was, it, you can, I should have been, because the freehand tool, you can lock the freehand to a drawing surface, and I should have done that, and that would prevent this, but we're going to keep moving forward anyway. So, this one, wait a second, where's our, you. Um, let's see, we had some questions in here about SketchUp licenses. It's a subscription license, um, yearly subscription. Uh, this is a regular class, definitely open to the public. Um, yeah, we do these live streams every week and we go over a different topic. So yeah, check it out on Fridays. There's also the previous recordings on, on our YouTube channel. Freehand tool is, yeah, the tool that lets you just kind of draw around however you want. Normally with SketchUp you have like very precise stuff you're doing a rectangle of precise dimensions or something like that or um you know an arc that you want to be exactly from a certain diameter but the freehand tool also just lets you draw um freely from any of those restrictions um speaking of classes actually 3d base camp has some good classes and this year i know in the past we've like recorded a bunch of the presentations this year it's in person baby all the classes are in person. There uh, will be a couple of recordings here and there, but not as many as we had done in the past. Um, so yeah, you gotta be there to get the all the goods.
software or the 3D base camp knowledge this year. Um, so that's a class closed to the public. No, it's open to the public, but it's uh, closed to the regular YouTube community. So come in person, learn some stuff. Um, uh, da, da, da. Jeff said, create a yo-yo effect. Yeah. You could definitely go up and down, yeah. You very much. Um, uh, something like this, definitely, it would just a little more, more time uh, and care, and you could start to create something really fun. Um, but let's see what we got. And I'm going to change, I'm going to change our style just so that we're not distracted by, if I have all these set up, Oh, I didn't save the camera view, so by clicking on working, where I had put over here, I did. So I want to um, I'm gonna get rid of that right now. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see, I, right, I was just changing which tags are on, and let's drop this back over here. Now, when I um, play this, uh, uh, I want to change the time between scenes. So again, let me uh, let me see if I can pick a, a version. Yeah, let's try this one, where it shouldn't matter if they're filled in. Yeah, this is nice and sketchy. So if I go to view, yeah, I gotta keep it sketchy. Yeah, settings. Um, I. Enable scene transitions, I want that off, but the slide delay between, it's at zero. If I turn it on right now, if I play, it should just kind of be a blur of like, oh, it's, it's too much. So, but if I turn that to, I don't know, 0 0.2, let's try that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so for those of you who are better uh, illustrators, you could do a better effect than this. But yeah, that's the idea. A little bit of fun. Uh, in I love it. Animation creative. is not the art of drawings that move, but the art of movements that are drawn. Order what? The court. <laughs> yeah, that was a groan. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got the hand-drawn animations here. I didn't think we were going to do some frame-by-frame -frame stuff, but, uh, oh, yeah, Transom says he, they used to do that with uh, a pad and paper. Yeah. Oh, right. Do one at a time and then flip it, you know, like the uh, flip book animation. Yeah, <clears throat> that's fun. <laughs> so fun. I don't know about all, I, like, I, how far back does that go? Because, I mean, you'd be sitting in class in junior high or something, and you're just, like, trying to not let, the teachers see that you're not paying any attention at all. <laughs> Drawing <laughs> no, flip books. <laughs> okay. Uh, that all right. That was kind of a fun detour. Let's go to our final example and play with keyframe animator. Okay. <clears throat> Seventh inning stretch, everybody. I shake it out. <laughs> Let me stretching. Ah. <laughs> it's crusty joints. <laughs> oh, seriously. All right, so as somebody pointed out, the Death Star is a great example where uh, the believe the official term, and actually this is not making, is greeblies, where you just make these things that look like they could be something. And if you look at this, it doesn't take any time to realize, yeah, I've got, I don't know, six or eight sets of greeblies that are copied around, and um, that one, right, is that one just rotated, scale, or reversed. And in this case, to get a little bit more depth to them, I took this and, uh, where's my, where's, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, degree bleeds. I set on just some blocks, so everything is set up on this grid, and each of these 
I think I uh, is set up as a, a series of eight that just sort of has different heights. And like I say, cool. some of them are rotated, um, just done the other way. And then, and especially when you're just moving past, yeah, it definitely gives the, um, the feel. So where are we? So I've got the detailed Greeblies on their own. I can turn those on and off. I can turn the base blocks on and off and I can turn the towers on and off. And I think I set the trench uh, as its own, it's its own group in here so that I could turn it on and off, which is important because, right, th this is a lot of geometry. You don't want to have to deal with everything while you're trying to establish animations. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, save this out so I can delete all of my existing scenes. Um, we had a question if this is good for creating a skeleton and making it move. I think using this keyframe animation or another extension um, would be a better way than the native uh, scene transition animations to make something look like it's moving. Uh, that's my own personal opinion. I'd agree. So yeah, stick around and check it out. Imagine these greeblies could be ulnas or um, God, I gotta know another bone. Um, femurs tibia. or tibia Femur. or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, rib cage. Um. Uh, it, it, and depending on how complicated you're gonna want to do, I I, I think it will become self-evident as we start to do this that you're only going to want to do basic animations with this tool it you can do a lot i say that but still think that like that means you can actually do a, a lot of interesting stuff really interesting but if you're wanting to do complex animations control your timing control your in and out kind of like if you get into animation you have sort of easing easing thank you easing which helps your animation look more real you have all of these things this doesn't give you this is uh this is going to be a pretty basic animation tool um that said let's uh let's start building some animations in here so i'm going to get rid of all these scenes so we can build some from scratch And like I say, uh, it, it's helpful that I can, uh, if I don't record, now there might be a time when you'd want to record tags, obviously, but if I don't add that as part of our uh, scenes, then I can turn these on and off and I can build it in a simpler view like this. And then I can turn the detailed stuff on when I want to export it, stuff like that. So I'm going to leave my towers on so I'm not running in through any of them, but this is a nicer uh, nicer space to, to work with. All right, here is um, the basics of it. So you have to have scenes to use Keyframe Animator, and Keyframe Animator is a paid plugin. It's a $40-ish. Um, yeah, I think forty-two dollars. I dropped the uh, the link to the website in the description, so if you're interested, you can check it out there. Yeah, so it uh, um, so not shilling for it, but just it is interesting, and it is fairly straightforward to use. Again, I will say, uh, which is, uh, we would think this would be self-evident. Plan ahead, but so many times you're just in the moment and you're just working in the moment and then you get yourself into trouble <laughs> and you're like, I wish I had thought about X, Y, and Z first, but so I, I, when you're doing this, you need to create your scenes first in my recommendation. And again, I'm not going to include anything. So I'm going to create two scenes, one, two. Now you can move your objects and animate them first and you don't have to animate your camera, but we are gonna do both and we're gonna do them separately. So depending on what we're trying to do, 
I might try and do my camera first. I might say like, I have a view where I'm coming and flying into, you know, and then flattening out into the, the Death Star. So I'm gonna some view like this maybe. I'm gonna go back to scene one and record the camera location. And then uh, uh, we're coming in, like I say, sort of zooming in and flattening out across the surface. Something maybe like this. And so scene two, I'm gonna update the camera location. Let me turn my, um, open these back up and make that like three seconds. So let's test this and make sure we're not running through any towers. Whoa. Now when you're setting up, if you've done scene transitions, you probably noticed this. We mentioned at some point that you don't have a lot of fine control. I personally wish this would sort of zoom, swoop in a little more dramatically. And um, the trans, you, you can't fine tune that transition, but you can think of a camera move or something as based on the in and out view of where you're looking. So as an example, you know, if I, if you're coming in here and coming out here, it's going to do some sort of arc between them. If I go to scene two and let's just say I leave myself in the same spot, I'm going to use this look around and I'm going to look way off. Now that changes the in and out because now my in is here and my out like might be something like that. So if I update scene two, that should give me a lot more swoop. I don't want this as my final scene two. And yeah, look, it, whoa, oh, we're, dropped we're really underneath. Now. But as long as you understand that idea, then you can try to somewhat predict what's going to happen. I'm going to bring this back down, but if I'm looking a little bit up, I might get a little more swoop in closer to the uh, surface. So maybe let's try this one and see what happens. Uh, nope, still, still a little, a little too close. So let's bring our view down a little bit more. And see if that. Uh, I should remember we're that I have. Really yeah, we're really buzzing, and we have a little bit of height on our greeblies. So, <laughs> sure enough, once oh. we once we turn those on. So, um, anyway, I we don't. <clears throat> I just want to make that point in case you hadn't run into it before. I think if we just flatten this out, we'll we'll still get something interesting. Let me. See if that, all right, that one comes, that one's coming across. All right, so we have our camera movement set. Now we want to take our X wings here. And what I'm thinking is that at the start of our view, we can't see them that much, but then they sort of come into view and, and we're following them. So. I'm going to make sure scene one is active. And when using keyframe animator, I'm going to actually click on the tab. So no more going over here to, to change the parameters. Keyframe animator wants a key, wants a scene to very much be active, <laughs> whatever that means <clears throat> to you. But I, I'm, so I'm going to click on scene one. So make sure it's highlighted in the top bar. Make sure it's highlighted up here. Mm -hmm. I Now that runs you into trouble because if this is highlighted, I've got this view and if I can't see my, so I can't select them, that's why I pre-selected these so that when I go to scene one, they're here. I'm gonna click on this record button. I don't know if that comes across, there's a little ding. I still have these selected I have recorded them to scene one. I'm going to move these up here somewhere ahead of scene two and then activate my scene two. Um, let's bring these down lower. We're going to tweak these uh, more as we go, but scene two is active. 
I'm going to click. All right. Now, if I go back to scene one, they're not animated, but that's what this play button is for. If I hit play, you see they've moved back to scene one. And now if I click scene two, they're moving, our camera's moving. Cool. So that's fun. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, late on that, but that was cool. Nice. Um, now, now that we have the basics in place, we could tweak it a little more. So the movement, as best I can tell, the movement between objects, the interpolation is similar to what we were talking about with camera, whereas you kind of want your in and out to work. Um, in fact, maybe this will, I hope this will make sense. If not, we could sort of do a, a, another example over here, but um, so if I jump back, right now it's a, they're doing a fairly straight line. Uh, this one, let's take this X-Wing. It's sort of pointing in this direction. Go back to scene two. And, and instead, I'm going to have it rotated. So it's pointing this way. And maybe move. Uh, I, have to, I have to try to keep in mind my scene two. Sometimes it's hard to, um... oh yeah, I, I... by clicking scene two. So I want to turn this play button off. Hopefully now if I click on scene two, it's not changing the, the object. So it's just going back to my view. So let's go here. that same thing with this one that's uh, and by turning these hopefully we're creating a little bit more of an arc in their in their transition so scene once I'm going to click both of these I'm going to click on record I'm not worried I my scene two is active up here so I can click record, and that's just going to record the objects. My, my camera is still safe. Let's see what happens. So the objects are recorded using the little record button. That's the keyframe for the objects. And then the keyframe for the camera is still through the scene transition animation. Yeah. Cool. But it, it is, uh, you just have to be careful that you're, typically I, you, you edit your scenes over here Whereas you have to be careful that you're editing with the active tab here when you're recording objects. It's just kind of the nature of this one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hit play. Let's test that. Okay. So hopefully you can Beautiful. see that there was a bit more of a, an arc to that. And um, <clears throat> yeah, scene two, in fact, if I like that, yeah, swoops a little much. I'm going to raise up and lower my view just a little bit. And uh, that way, yeah, there we go. Now we're following them a little better. Nice. So Yeah, they definitely have an arc. Uh, you know, they even have a better character arc than Portkin says. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, Looks like we have Jody Gates in the chat. Hey. 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 Oh, it was supposed to be your day off, but he still comes to sketch up live. That's how much he hey, loves it. Hey, hello. <laughs> um, good to see you here. Um, Transom says hopefully the pilots have their uh, their barf bags or air sick bags handy because uh, they're swooping, but they're probably used to it. They're fighter pilots, right? That's right. They're, they're the best post pilots in the outer room territory. These, these guys are... Ooh. I'm gonna now we're getting fancy. Add two more scenes. So what's happening at this point? For me, the way I use this tool, in fact I can show a, a version of this that I exported. I don't I won't typically view go from let's say, you know, scene one to scene two. Now if I create another scene they're not going to seamlessly fly out of scene two into scene three and, and, and I could just like 
it's a continuation. So I, again, if you're, if you're assembling a construction, very different philosophy, but in this case where I was trying to build, you know, more of a, a, a cinematic experience, that's one shot. Scene one to scene two is one shot. Now I'm gonna reset for a completely different shot. Um, so, like with that in mind, I'm moving these back and we're gonna basically run, we're just using the same terrain to create several shots because it's gonna work for us. Uh, and I can, I can show this, this was my little experiment a while ago to have fun with this. But this is, like I say, this is three scenes, same, same idea, here we go. <laughs> All right, and music makes everything better, right? <laughs> It's awesome. We'll do that once more. Just fun. Here's a here's a question that I could throw out to the chat. How do you think we did this final shot? I mean, it, it, for those of you, uh, you can probably guess this pretty easily, but this uh, this final view. Throw some guesses out in the in the chat on how we, we, we could accomplish that. I'll sh I, I can show it, but so well, how did we do it? First <laughs> person in the chat gets uh, a womp rat. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to Toshi Station. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you some free power converters if you guess it. Um, <laughs> Lightship three fifty said they're working on a tiny home animation for YouTube. Oh, um, very cool. They're using the keyframe animator trial and said it's fairly easy and lots of fun. Um, but basically using camera zoom and height and adding and taking away parts of the model with tags. So sweet. That is super cool. And get to know that keyframe. I feel like keyframe animator is one of those plugins that gets the vibe of SketchUp, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like simple. It's uh, you just do this, this, and this, and then you get a pretty cool result pretty easily. So, um, yeah. Dubs asked if you had to render the shadows independent of the model for the trench run video. Um, okay, so uh, shadows. I don't know if you're asking because you've tried keyframe animator and if we turn shadows on right now, which we could, you know, we got these cool shadows and then we ran a keyframe animation, it's, it's not going to be actively updated with the shadows. However, when you export, it will be with an okay. asterisk that I have found that they're not like some objects are, some objects aren't and um, so I, what I've found is like the shadows do work when you export, but, uh, again, that's with sometimes, um, better results than others. Nice. Uh, we have a couple guesses here for the, the overlay thing. Mm -hmm. Tag with a window frame, a foreground image, PNG picture. An image with transparency, um, or background image moved forward. I have a guess, but I don't want to spoil it. I don't know if uh, I should say. Actually, heck, I want the power converters. Is it a? <laughs> I can't even remember the name. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, I'm thinking of it. It's having to do with watermark. Is it a watermark? Oh, uh, well played, Matt. Well played. It is a watermark, however, Perfect. however, let's see if this works. Uh, scene four, let's quick do a, a test. So I'm gonna tweak these. Ah, uh, yeah, see, now we get a, I'm gonna 
tweak these cool. a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll show that in a, in a moment. Um, but it, it, it was a watermark based on a, an actual SketchUp file. Nice. Did you just like trace over uh, like a screenshot from the movie, or how did you? Uh, yeah, you sort of. Uh, sort of. It's an actual model. I'll show you. So let's tweak this a little bit. Oh, now we're really flipping. Um, okay, I can update these because scene four is active, and let's. Uh, See what we got. All right. Ooh, that's awesome. That's fun. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, all right. So, just to, before we move on, um, yeah. So this, if I zoom out, like many of you guessed, because you're right, it's a it's a watermark that's based on a PNG, but the PNG itself was, um, if I change to a non-watermark, was just this model that was actually like, okay, what makes it look like the inside of a, of a TIE fighter? Just some fun red and little controls, and then I've got um, The fun, the fun part about this is like when you're doing this, you're like, I am doing legitimate homework when I go to Star Wars and I watch the trench run 20 times. And I'm like comparing the, comparing the different shots and like the, the wider or closer views. And so, yeah, I think, I think several of you recognize this right away. This is uh PNG exported from a model that is used then as a uh, a watermark. So yeah, that's awesome. Fun and yeah, times. it's like, hey, I'm working over here. <laughs> you, can you kids quiet down? I'm trying to watch Star Wars. I'm exactly. Uh, I'm working. <laughs> um, so we've got two good scenes there. Um, uh. Uh, in the interest of like we have a few minutes left well I maybe we can create one or two more but that's kind of the basics of it is that uh, just be very careful if you do use keyframe animator to, to pl again plan ahead know which scenes you're you're working towards and and a, this tripped me up a lot until I was like okay you have to use the scene tabs you have to be careful that the scene tab is active when you go to update your your um, geometry placement and mm -hmm. rotation and stuff, and not your scenes over here, which is typically, as we saw, how I would typically manage my scenes. Um, yeah. But uh, the other thing is, if you're on PC, so once I've got those uh, keyframes in there, if I go to um, export animation, if you're on PC, you can export this out as video. If you're on a Mac, you can not, and you can export it out as an image sequence, which you then have to compile. But most any video editor, you can do that really easily. A lot of them have import settings for image sequences. So but if I tried to export this, it'll say, no, no, not on Mac. <laughs> well, another benefit of working on PCs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Got it built in. Nice and easy. Um, we also had some comment in the chat about Fredo 6 Animator. Um, mm -hmm. And Tyson talked about it a bit up front, but um, it, basically how it deserves its entire own stream. Or uh, Yeah, there's a lot in there. There's a lot. Uh, that's possible. There's a lot to cover, and yeah, it's an amazing, uh, amazing extension. Um, so, yeah, not talking about it today, but perhaps sometime in the future because, yeah, it's uh, 
It's crazy. It, it, yeah, I'd love to get into it um, in, a, in a different stream. Let's see. And Patrick also asks, like, you know, seeing the X-Wings fly and everything, that's cool, but when are the guns going to fire? <laughs> <laughs> okay. A, a fair question. Let me, let me, um, let's see. I got scene five active. I'm going to do that and then move them up here for scene six. And just get my basic setup done. Um, one of the things, so <laughs> when are the guns going to fire? Obviously, there's some things that you can push the, the effects, but like if you're doing a one movement and uh, in between there you're trying to have other things, you know, you might have to do that in post, I suppose. But <laughs> one of the reasons that I like not having um, styles saved is that uh, when we come back here, um, and I apologize, it's probably some noise going on. If I turn on some interesting settings here, all of a sudden those are still active and I can export that out. And just like Photoshop compositing, now I can come in here and say I want to export out um, just a version that's line work. And I want to export out just a version that's colors and no line work and then I'll composite. And as long as I have these two uh, saved and I'm not messing with them, then I can export out this exact same image sequence or animation in several versions, which includes because I was I was wondering that same thing and I haven't tested this yet but if I go into my X-Wing here I've got uh, I've got where's my where's my outliner did I get rid of it it's down here somewhere in here I, and and this is like I grabbed these from a long ago model, so I don't I don't know what. Uh, but okay, so I've got these. <laughs> right, <laughs> I've got these, but I could take those, turn those on, turn the rest of this off. Um, uh, I need to go in and reset. And then again, export just that out and then take that as another composite layer and add some bloom and other stuff to make it look like a glowy effect, right? So, I, you know, again, limitations, but within limitations, you can get, uh, you can have a lot of fun being creative. So, yeah. when are they going to oh. shoot? I don't know. <laughs> We'll post this model online. You can do it yourself. Yeah. I want to see what you do. Um, we also had a question from Randy. How long did it take you to put the Greeblies together? I know you said you did it in a couple of components and, um, you know, rotating them and copying them and stuff like that. So um, probably not as long as it would take to model all this individually, but um, yeah. Um, Did you spend a lot of time doing the the greeblies and stuff, or? I I don't remember. Honestly, this model um, it is about a year old from uh, when I was experimenting with something else, and so I just it's a fun example for this, so I, I dug mm -hmm. it up. But you know, how long does it take you to model a block like this? Let me get a better uh, style. Most of you out there would not um, would, would would be able to do a block like that real fast, right? And same with that one, and same with that one. And so, the the thing that um, 
the thing that, that I think you just need to keep in mind is establish your grid, whether it's going to be a square grid or a rectangle grid, and, uh, and just be able to say, okay, this is my grid, therefore all of my pieces, whether I do 6 or 10 or 20, and then you start dispersing them. And yeah, I disperse these by hand. I think there's some, um, in fact, I'm sure that both Scatter and just some other plugins could help disperse them, but I just I just created kind of, it didn't take that long to create two or three of these blocks that then I'm just rotating, flipping, and, um, and then you do that enough times and you have lots of variation. So it's not a long project and it's certainly a fun one. And then once you have a few blocks, psh, you're off to the races, it's easy peasy. Cool. Um, nice. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? We we can we can kind of wrap it up at this point. But um, if there's any other questions? Shout them out. We had a suggestion for a live stream for Tron Light Bike Race slash Fight. Mm. So that would be pretty sweet. Yeah, it would. Um, Patrick also was saying how you could use Boris uh, particle effects to composite um, like gunfire particles over the uh, over the uh, animation here. Now, is that a SketchUp plugin? I do not think so. Boris particle it sounds. It's like it's for like uh, non-linear editors. But definitely, so your suggestion is like it's a good one for in post for doing it. So that'd be fun. Um, mm -hmm. Keggy has a question. I wonder if the original coders of the first version of SketchUp ever thought that it would be able to do this level of animation. <laughs> I have heard a story about the original scene transition animation, how it was just like a weekend project. One of the early um, person who worked on the software basically was just like, huh, I wonder if this would work. And then on Monday came in and was like, hey, check it out. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what? I feel like so. early on that, that was like, that was true from two aspects. One. Uh, early software is easier to to manipulate. I think anyone mm -hmm. who works in development knows that the deeper you go, the, the more you can break stuff when you try to add new stuff. And two, I think it's true just because that sounds like kind of everything. Joe Esch was the original creator of SketchUp, the original coder, mm -hmm. and he was. I mean, he's one of these guys that he would, you know, you know it's just incredibly brilliant, incredibly go away for a weekend and come back with an entirely new feature. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's definitely a huge part of why we're here today. So yeah. huge thanks to Joe. He is well-deserved, well, uh, retired for several years now. Um, there's a lot of things that they back <laughs> yeah. and watch SketchUp Live on exactly. Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> who who would have thought we would have been bought by Google and then who, th who would have thought we'd been bought by Trimble and who would have thought we'd be, you know, joined by people all over the world, even in the, whatever time is it in India? My goodness. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Holy cow. It's dedication. Europe alone. I mean, I, I hope you're all at a pub. Like, is there... Uh, you know what, Matt? Is there a drinking game? Like, what do we say frequently that you could drink to? Like, what do we say? <laughs> You're like, uh, <laughs> actually, nobody reminded you to save all all stream today. That's, That's normally a thing that people. Talk That's about. true. Probably three D base camp plugs. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, that was a whirlwind of 
of stuff and we're we're coming up on two hours so we should we should call it but if there's you know other questions and stuff but let uh holler we can answer but otherwise you know i'd like to revisit this i would like to do fredo's um animator i need to mm -hmm. i need to learn that myself i think matt you know a little bit about it um, but you have a lot more control i think yeah yeah absolutely yeah i've used it for a few things and um yeah there's a lot of granularity stuff you can change and and you can get get up and started pretty quickly i watched one of justin geiss's videos on uh the applic or the um extension part me to to get a little bit up to speed and do some some stuff but uh yeah there's a lot to crack into because it's robust to say the least absolutely mm -hmm. um yeah oh uh, a couple more things before we head out <laughs> Nice. I, I want to show this. This was this was a funny little. Uh, if you watch Star Wars again, I did my homework. It was homework. I I watched the trench run twenty times. <laughs> there's there's key elements to like what uh, what people will suggest makes a Star Wars kind of uh, site, and one of them is this idea of a star field. Oh, nice. So, yeah, this is just a repeating simple tile pattern on the inside of this. And uh, depending on if we get the right one here. Um, anyway, you, sorry, you were saying something. And I'm, That's beautiful. So I'm no. still, I can't stop goofing around. This is, this is way fun. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take off. Tyson will st stick around here and keep uh, throwing more greeblies on this thing until uh, the wee hours of the night. Exactly. Um, but before we head out today, a couple things I wanted to uh, let you know about. Again, the three base camp 10% off Earth Day promotion. Uh, it's going to go for the next week because today's Earth Day. Uh, the um, promo code is Earth Day 2022. You apply that at checkout, 10% off any ticket to 3D base camp. Um, check it out. Also, next week, same time, same place, uh, we will have a stream with the new application SketchUp for iPad. So Aaron will be modeling like this, just uh, live modeling on the iPad application. So uh, tune in, check it out. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, obviously, you can do a lot of what you can do in the desktop version on the iPad, but there's a lot of stuff you can't do that's only on iPad. So peep it. It's sweet. And... Uh, the day before that, next Thursday, the 28th, um, we have a podcast, our podcast, a uh, design-based podcast called Donuts Design and Debate. Every episode, we have a guest on to suggest a design topic. We debate whether it's good or bad, and then the audience votes on what they think. And we're talking about NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Um, it's got to have something to do with design, right? <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, no, too <laughs> <laughs> Tune in and see if NFTs are good design. It'll be on our Crowdcast platform. I'll drop a link in the chat uh, right after this. But, um, yeah, going to be a lot of fun. It's live just like this, and you get to vote and decide the outcome of the show. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm a co-host. I think it's a lot of fun. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's upcoming stuff we have um, in the SketchUp world. So, yeah, that's the plug section of the show is now over. <laughs> all right well uh hey everybody have a a great weekend thank you so much for joining us matt thank you buddy it's always great to hang out and uh be safe be well uh look forward to seeing you all again cheers yeah thanks guys it's been fun ladies and gentlemen the weekend <laughs>